Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. Today we're going to be showcasing the MSI GT72 Dominator Pro. This is a re-release of the unit with an upgraded GPU now featuring the NVIDIA GTX 970 and 980 mobile. This will be a full length, full featured review so we'll go ahead and start things off with an unboxing so you can see exactly what to expect if you order one of these for yourself. As you can see, it does come double boxed, and the outside box is there to help protect it during shipping, both from scratch damage and such, but also it helps protect it from prying eyes so nobody sees this bright, flashy gaming laptop box coming to your front door. The internal box has the red and black color scheme, which is the trademark of the MSI Dragon Gaming logo. And as you can see, it's actually a fairly small box, so despite the idea that you have a 17-inch gaming laptop, everything is well packed so it doesn't take too much space. On the inside right away we have the laptop which is covered by cardboard wings on the sides that's to help from crush and shock damage and then it has the plastic and other covering to help protect it from any kind of scratching. Further once you have the laptop out of that casing you'll see that it has a plastic covering that is protecting the top of the LCD lid. Now underneath of the laptop, this is where we're going to have a plastic bag that contains our driver's disc, warranty information, and product manuals. Over on the left compartment hidden away, we have the power cable and the power brick. These are responsible for charging the unit's battery and running off of mains power. For the power supplied by the adapter, if you take the amperage and the voltage and multiply them together, you'll find that it's about 230 watts of power. Now with the unboxing out of the way, we can go take our first look at the unit itself. When you first open it up, you're going to reveal an oversized cleaning cloth that was protecting the screen and the keyboard. This can be very handy to hold on to and keep in your bag. Now we've got the unit powered on and we're going to start the in-depth tour of the unit. You'll see the screen is a 17-inch screen. This is a matte type, so it's non-glossy. Down below the 17-inch footprint of the bottom of the unit. We have the oversized touchpad with the blue LED backlighting behind it, individual left and right click buttons. Moving over to the right hand side, this is where we're going to find our optical drive. In this case it's sporting a Blu-ray reader and writer so everything from CDs to DVDs to Blu-ray can be written and read from that drive. It does have a dedicated eject button so you can eject it without having to worry about any kind of software eject keys and the small opening for an emergency eject with like the tip of a pin. Next to the optical drive, you have two USB 3.0 ports, and then we move over to the back. Over here, we're going to see the brushed aluminum finish on the top of the LCD lid, and of course the MSI logo in the center. Down below, getting our first look at the rear of the unit, we'll see two large openings for the cooling system, and then we'll zoom in and take a look at the ports for connectivity. On the furthest to the left, we have the Kingston lock port, so you can lock down the laptop, and into the center we have two mini display port connections, HDMI output, RJ45 for your local networking, and then of course the power connection for charging the battery and for running off of mains power. Now as we make it over to the left hand side of the unit you're going to find a grand total of four USB 3.0 ports all in a row. And that's followed by four 3.5 millimeter audio connections. You're going to have your headphone out, your microphone in, line out, and line in, so a great connectivity for USB and audio. And then lastly on the left side you're going to have an SD card reader. That completes the exterior connectivity of the unit, so we'll give you a 360 degree spin before we move on to moving into the operating system itself for benchmarking and looking at our hardware inside of the system. The benchmarks have started and here we are with PC Mark 8. Our score for that was 3219. As you can see the GT72 makes a pretty decent desktop replacement and we'll continue to prove that further as we move into more benchmarks. The only thing to worry about when it comes to a 17 inch laptop is of course carrying it around and that's when the size and the weight come into play. So here we are showing you the weight so we can put that in perspective. The laptop by itself is 8 pounds and 5 ounces. And once you add in the power adapter, that brings it up to 10 pounds and 6 ounces. That weight on its own is not too bad when you're carrying this in a backpack for short distances. 
But if you were toting this around 24 hours a day, that would be something you might want to keep in mind. And not to leave the power adapter out and feeling unwanted, we weighed him by himself and we got two pounds, zero ounces. When it comes to the size of the unit, as far as thickness, with the tape measure, we see the front of it is under two inches, while the rear is just right at two inches. So it's a fairly thin profile laptop, considering that it's a high-end gaming station. Now it's time to show off some of the GT72's flare with all the LED backlighting available in the unit. Once we turn off the lights, you'll clearly see that we have LED lighting in the front, the touchpad, and the keyboard. These can be adjusted from software to have multiple patterns and colors, so you can customize it to look exactly the way you would like it to. While still looking at the keyboard area, we'll show you all of the hotkeys on the left hand side, starting from the top down. Of course, our top button is the power. The second button is our graphics button. This is a dedicated button for switching between the integrated graphics and your dedicated graphics. So this gives you a nice way to make sure that you're always using the proper video card for what you're trying to do. Down below that, we have our turbo fan feature, and this is something you can turn on and off to manually force the fans into a certain speed in case you're going for maximum cooling. Down below that is going to be a media shortcut. Right now it's launching XSplit, but you could choose to have it launch other programs as well. And our final button is a hotkey for controlling some of the LED backlighting. Our next stop in the review is going to be the system device manager to get a look at all the internal hardware. The key ingredients here are going to be the NVIDIA GTX 980 mobile, the killer branded wired and wireless networking, and of course our core i7 Intel CPU. Over on the right hand side we also have the monitor panel details for you. Our next benchmark for you is going to be the ambient noise levels in the room. As you move into higher end laptops, of course the cooling system also has to get an upgrade to keep the things inside nice and cool during all of those stressing benchmarks and gaming sessions. But while some noise is obviously a necessary evil, some laptops do a much better job than others. And that's why we include this benchmark for you, so we can see exactly what the noise levels are and decide whether or not they're within normal ranges. As of now, we're on the front of the laptop and we're running a gaming benchmark, so we have the system under a decent load. The noise levels at this point are really good, so there's no issues with the noise levels. And of course, because of our fan override feature, we can actually go ahead and crank the fans up all the way. That way we can show you the worst case scenario with the cooling system in full effect.
Our next out of the box benchmark is going to be for temperature testing. And in this benchmark, we're going to be using an infrared thermometer and checking for any heat sources in the laptop area. The cooling system takes care of most of the system heat, but it is not unusual for areas such as the keyboard and a few other small places to let the system ventilate for cooling. The key thing to look for here is that areas where your hands are going to be touching and the user interaction occurs don't pick up that heat so that it becomes uncomfortable to use the system during operation. So as you can see, so far while we're browsing all the major areas, there's not really any hot spots that the user would be touching. As we move around to the rear of the unit, you can see this is where the temperatures really start to pick up. It's not unusual for a 17-inch gaming laptop to be able to exhaust most of the heat out the back because it does have enough space to build a really robust cooling system. It's usually in the smaller systems that we see heat compromises made as far as the cooling. And now it's time for us to dive deeper into our performance benchmarks. We'll start off with 3D Mark 11, and for that we have a performance score of 10,997. Up above we have the full GPU-Z information on the GTX 980 mobile. And then to the left we have all the thermal temperatures that we monitored during that benchmark. Here we see that our CPU did not even reach 70 degrees Celsius max, and that is amazing. And then down below when we get to the NVIDIA, you'll see that it only reached 71 degrees Celsius max. So the cooling system in this laptop is doing a really top-notch job. And next up on the list is 3 d Mark's Fire Strike. For that benchmark, we got a score of 8,361. Right below that, you get some of the headline statistics. Over to the right, we have some of our charts. And here is the full detailed view of all of the running statistics. And here's just a quick peek of the 3D Mark 11 score that we achieved while using the GTX 970 mobile. So here again, we have all of our GPU Z information. and the thermal temperatures. CPU was barely 60 degrees Celsius max on this one, and the same for the GPU did not even reach 60 degrees Celsius. So the temperatures definitely went down on the lower end video card, but the performance scores were still quite admirable. Also, we did run Fire Strike as well with the GTX 970. Here you see the score went down to 6,568. And we'll let you take a look at all the detailed system specs as far as the charts and data on the unit. Here is our sound system test, we're pretty sure that speaks for itself. We do have our sound meter out again so you can see just exactly how loud the system can get as far as volume. And now it's time for us to move into the final part of our review, which is going to be minor disassembly of the unit. As you can see, there is a warranty sticker right in the center that you'd have to break to get into the unit. There's seven screws in total to remove to make the bottom half of the laptop come off, including the one in the center where the warranty sticker was. If for any reason there's upgrades to the system you want to make, you can order those changes through us and we can perform the upgrades for you and still provide you a warranty to cover it. So this is one of those times it's really a good idea to order the upgrades through the reseller rather than doing them on your own for a new system.
Once we get inside, we'll see the subwoofer on the right hand side hidden away next to it under all the plastic is going to be the battery. Up above that we're going to have our wireless card and some system RAM slots. The cooling fans in the top right and left corner with our heat pipes that connect to the GPU and CPU. Below that is our 2.5 inch mechanical hard drive that's for our mass storage needs. And then here we have the M2 SSDs. Right now there's two in the system running on that single card but there's actually a capacity to hold up to four. Removing just a single screw takes up that little unit and as we flip it over you'll see that while there's two on top we can also hold two more on the bottom. So that means up to four M2 SSDs can be put into a single RAID array for a large and very, very fast main storage device. The last thing to do is to take up the cooling system and here we have both of the cooling fans and the entire heat pipe system taken up. You can see the one on the right is for the system CPU and the one on the left is for the system GPU. And the dedicated GPU can be removed, so here is the NVIDIA card. And that, everybody, is going to be concluding our review on the MSI GT72 Dominator Pro. We hope you enjoyed our review, and we just want to remind you that, of course, for more information on the unit, just visit our website, gentechpc.com, and there we have the full system specifications and the current pricing and availability. If you have any further questions that our review did not answer for you, then feel free to contact us by phone or email. We're always happy to help you out. And, of course, you can always post some comments here in our YouTube video, and we'll try to answer those for you for everybody else to see as well. We just want to thank you for watching and remind you that once again, this was Gentech PC, and we'll see you next time.